Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all having a great start to a new day. Wednesday, hump day, they call it. And uh, this is Pastor Randy Scott uh, with Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits. And like I said, hope all is doing well. If you see the ribbon below the, uh, the, the live stream here, see the question, you know, why worry? There's always all kinds of replacements for worry. But, you know, we all do, don't we? I think we all struggle a bit with, with worry, with fretting, uh, with concerns. And, uh, you know, and that's not usually the problem. Uh, the problem with worry is when worry consumes us. And that's what we got to be cautious and letting happen. Uh, because we know that we have a God that's able. We have a God nothing's impossible with. Uh, but yet we, we tend to hang on to the worry and stress. And, you know, the, the sad thing about worry is what? It's not healthy uh, physically, mentally, because uh, worry can bring on fear, anxiety, all those things that we really, truly don't need. And actually, uh, we don't want in our lives. But, you know, we all know somebody uh, that seems to just worry about everything. And they never seem to have an answer for anything. But every time they come to you, they're worried, they're fretting. And what do we do? You know, we usually have a special scripture verse that we give to them. And, you know, I do. And, <laughs> you know, but again, it still comes down to what type of relationship you're in and with who. And again, if you surround yourself with people that worry or give in to worry and give in to fretting and, and, and have no answers or results, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to worry and fret. And again, does worry, does worry stop anything from happening? The answer should be absolutely no, it doesn't. Our worrying and fretting stops nothing. But you know what? Our praying and seeking God's face can solve many things. And, uh, you know, we pray for those people around us. And uh, oh, let me take a moment and say good morning, everybody. Hey, Sister CJ, what's happening, Dina? Uh, babe, how you doing? Cousin Nora down south Delaware, slower, do lower Delaware. Paula, how you doing from Ohio? Madeline uh, from Price's Corner now. So anyhow, back to these things. And have I worried? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I get concerned uh, and, and I worry, you know, I worry about our church. I'm like most pastors. And I don't know if you call the word worry. You know, we're certainly concerned. And uh, but yeah, you know, concern can even go into worry. And Freddie, when we start taking more things upon ourselves than what we need to take. Uh, and so we've got to learn, again, to come before the Lord. Uh, spend time there, you know, uh, stay in that relationship. And then his word becomes more meaningful. But I want to share, you know, in Luke uh, chapter four, you know, uh, Jesus coming on the scene and, and, uh, you know, he was, uh, this was a time where he was actually rejected at Nazareth. And, uh, uh, but he walked into uh, on a Sabbath day, walked in uh, and he picked up uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah and he read, and this was actually a prophecy fulfilled by him. But I want you to listen to, to what the word says here. So Jesus is reading uh, Luke chapter four, verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's a different type of scripture, but it comes out of Isaiah 61, one, but he confirmed uh, his position uh, in that thing. And, and of course, you know, he put the book down and people were astounded, you know, like, why did he go there? And uh, we know why he went there. Uh, and, and and I just shared that scripture to remind us of, of who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. He came to set us free. He say, came to set us free from anything that holds us captive. So if worry uh, uh, and, and fear and those things seem to grip us and seem to hold on, uh, that's a time to come before the Lord and confess it and give it to him and, and ask him to do a work in you to get you beyond it. Because I'm sure, you know, uh, some of the great men of God, Abraham feared, you know, when they were traveling with Sarah, you know, uh, he he's, uh, went into Egypt. He said, Sarah, you know, tell them you're my sister, because if not, you know, they'll kill me. You know, and those guys, uh, Moses feared at times. Uh, but, you know, to say they had conversation with the Lord, they went right back to the source of their strength. Uh, Paul, back to the source of their strength. Uh, whenever I go through things, and guys, again, I, I got to remind you, I've not arrived. I'm not perfect. 
there, there are times that, that, that I even go. I, I think that's why this tidbits things helps me a little bit because it gets me to certain places uh, in the word that, uh, that remind me uh, uh, where I need to get back to, because again, I don't have the answer for everything. I'm not the fix all person. You know, I, I have to rely on the Lord uh, so much. Awesome. Awful. Also, man, a lot of my speech. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but all I do know is this, that worry distracts us. Worry takes us to a place where we do lose control. You know, and, you know, the, there are healthy fears and then there are uh, unhealthy fears. But again, it all comes down to what you allow to control you. And that's where it becomes either a tool for something good or a tool for something bad. If you're hanging out to fear, and it causes you to recluse yourself or draw back. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. And what most people won't talk about worry and fear most times is they, they won't talk about it. Uh, because again, uh, you know, a sign of weakness. Well, it's not a sign of weakness. You know, confession is good for the soul. I mean, bring these things out, talk to somebody about them, but talk to somebody who's not going to come alongside you and say, Oh, poor you. I know you're going through a tough time and, you know, and life is tough and, you know, and again, I'm not going to say, you know, someone hands you lemons, make lemonade because, you know, there are some people don't even know how to make good lemonade. <laughs> so be careful with some of those cliches. Uh, but my thing is you really research, really take a check. OK, why are you fearful? What are you worried about? OK, what are you getting anxious about? And I and I, and I guarantee you, if you really sit and think about it, it's all things that you have no control of anyhow. Could be someone in your life, could be a job situation, could be something in church, could be anything. But generally, those things grip us with things that we have no control over. But we have a God that's in control of everything. So I encourage you today, you know, if you're worrying about something, fretting about something, go to the throne room of God. You know, that was actually the scripture today, uh, Hebrews 4, 16. You know, come boldly to the, the throne of God that you may receive grace and mercy in time of need and and so it's those times when we get uh, uh, in a weak state, a vulnerable state that we need to spend time again before who? Before the Lord. So, folks, hope this is helpful. Uh, something I have to think about and, and everybody has to deal with it. I, I don't care who they are, how, how tough they seem to be. Uh, uh, you know, we, we don't live with everybody. We don't know what everybody goes through. But, you know, sometime or another, some of these things hit us all and we have to deal with it. So. Uh, don't isolate yourself out to thinking like it's only me because it's not. It's truly not. So, folks, hang in, hang on. Don't give up. Give it to him. He wants it. He'll take it from you. He'll set you free uh, from whatever is holding you captive. So have a blessed day. And again, pray for those that need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because, you know, uh, we as believers, if we're struggling with things, can you imagine what lost people are struggling with? Look at the mess this world's in. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's be thankful. Let's be grateful. Let's ask him to do a work in us and move forward, move ahead. Father, we just thank you and praise you and bless you for who you are and what you're going to do today in our lives, right now, at this very moment, what you're going to do in our lives. If we truly are receptive, we truly want to receive what you have for us. But Lord, we've got to come to the throne of grace. We've got to come before you boldly, boldly, boldly. And I don't think people understand that, Lord. So help us all to understand what that means, to, to just come with our all and have a serious, deep conversation with you. Father, that we can rise up, set free, receive a little mercy, receive a little grace to move forward in our lives to, again, be busy about your work. Father, we pray for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that today they might confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead and they will be saved. I pray, Lord, that they would take you so deep in that you would overwhelm them with your love and your salvation. Thank you for this time uh, that we have with each other each morning. Use it for your honor, glory, and praise. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, folks, have a blessed day. I want to remind everybody that uh, uh, Tidbits will not be on my personal Facebook page. It's going to be on our church page and on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so if you go to the YouTube channel, Iron Faith Fellowship, uh, so, you know, push the subscribe button below. Uh, you'll get the notices if you hit the bell. And on our church page, uh, I put information on my page, too. You go to uh, uh, Iron Faith Fellowship uh, and uh, 
you know, like the page or whatever, follow the page and it'll be on there. Uh, now, and I'll be sharing this obviously to my page, but the live streams streams will be on uh, our church page and YouTube from here on out. Okay. Starting tomorrow morning. So anyway, I love you guys. Be blessed. Have an awesome day and uh, good morning, everybody. Hey, Karen Locke, how you doing? Kathy. Hey, Charlie Reber. What's up? Sheila from the great state of Michigan. And uh, good to see everybody. So have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits. God bless. See you later.